Good morning. Well, it's morning here, 6.57 a.m. Uh, flipping this one on its head for the stream. I am up early. I'm up before Maxwell Miller, which is a first. Uh, I thought I'd just do an easy ride with the one of the final events here for the Stage 1 of La Tap the Tour. Rather than go out and try and hit the climb with any certain target, just enter the event and ride. Roll with the crew. So, just a crew ride today. Uh, front group again. I was in bed and logged in and uh, managed to hit the uh, the button at the right time and then logged out and then got up, had a coffee, had some breakfast, logged back in and boom, I'm back at the front again. So the tip still works to get to the front early on. What do we have? Just over a thousand people logged in at the moment, two minutes ago. Uh, lots of Australians in this one. It works for everyone. So apologies if you usually catch my streams in about 12 hours time. We're changing our days around. We'll see how this goes. Um, hey, hey, everyone's in the chins. So not a hard ride for me for this one. We'll just, we'll just cruise in mid pack, maybe at the back somewhere. Enjoy the sights and sounds. Um, this will be all still dressed up as the Tour de France. Haven't even caught up on the news yet. Haven't watched the stage, so I'll have to catch the replays of that. Uh, and I'll need to pair a heart rate monitor. Oh, it <laughs> connected. I just closed it. Here we go. Heart rate strap. Okay, so today we have Taxneo 2T. I haven't changed anything from the last stream. Using it some Massium Duos for power, cadence. And the Polar H10 for the heart rate strap. Oh, I'm one row off the front, was I? That was probably three or four seconds. I have the chat up today, so that's what it's all about. Just cruising with the crew. Uh, and maybe catching a few people who haven't caught a live stream before, because I'm doing this at a different time. Now what we see there is there's a lot more people than that, but Zwift will only draw uh, 100 riders around you. So it looks busy here, but that would be packed all the way back. Not a hard ride is not possible on Zwift, no, but I'll try and keep a lid on things. I haven't warmed up. That's a start. <laughs> so there's crowd. Oh, the, the, the crowds are in the wrong place. You can see the crowds there over there in the back. They're cheering no one, but there's no crowds in our start area. Can you see them over the back? That's... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Alrighty. Eight seconds to go. Oh, I better I better spin up or I'll miss the start. Here we go. Okay, so no, oh there we go. The crowds are in front of us too. Good, I'm glad these people are here for us. Alright, rolling out. How many did we get at the start? Eleven hundred? Just over eleven hundred. I think there's a few people gonna be racing this pretty hard. Not me though. We'll just enjoy the sights and sounds. Uh, position numbers will pop up in just a few seconds. I noticed they took a few seconds last time. There we go. Spot on cue. Ooh, I hope everyone is well. Uh, it's still the weekend in America, I think. Darren and I did the same thing. I was still in bed with my alarm going off at 6.25 a.m. I thought, oh, do I get up and do this right? I had all the streams set up. But I wasn't sure. And it depends if Max was going to complain early on or not. I haven't heard a peep out of him yet, so we're good. So I thought I'll log in. And at 6.30, which was half an hour before the event start, uh, nothing popped up. I'm like, oh no, what, what, what's happened? Is it not going to prompt me to change the... Uh, not change the world, but join the event. But it's at 7.01. Yeah, so just exactly a minute ago. So I had to wait for 6.31 and then a little join popped up. You've got to watch for that. If they schedule a ride or a, an event one minute past the hour. Uh, your subscribe alarm doesn't show up in the stream chat because I'm using IO chat. Uh, sorry, restream IO chat. But if people are watching this on YouTube, I can confirm this. Looks like everyone's going hard. I'm just cruising out. I've dropped 500 places. I 
That's all good. Oh, hot tip with this, you can change your wheels in this stuff. So we're all auto-assigned. I know, I, I've changed my wheels the other day, cool, so it kept those. So you see a lot of people with the, the default wheels on the Trek. We're all assigned the Trek Madone bike. But in the starting pens, you can change your wheels and the color of the bike. So I've uh, opted for something that stands out. That disc looks pretty cool. Oh, it doesn't all the comments on the uh, on YouTube. It must be broken. Damn. Okay, so what Darren's talking about there is if you're a member of the YouTube, or the GP Army YouTube channel, you have a little llama next to your name. Uh, works in comments. It should work in chat too, but... Hmm. Good morning, Twitch. How are we? Jill's streaming this one on YouTube and Twitch. Twitch is interesting. It's, it's far superior for graphic quality. I send out one single stream and then Restream sends it to multiple places for me. Twitch just looks perfect. YouTube kind of runs over the stream with a bus and then sends it out to everyone and says, here, take that. YouTube looks okay, but yeah, if you don't know the difference, you wouldn't know the difference, but if you switch over to Twitch, it looks so good. However, everybody's on YouTube. Well, everybody's on Facebook. Most of the people that follow this channel over on YouTube. All right, where are we? Nearly at the back. Hello. I will have time to talk for this one. Definitely won't be holding 300 up the climb. So the goal the other day, the first event of this, which was Saturday afternoon our time, was to hit 300 up the climb and just peg that. I got that to the what? Perfect. Worked out really, really well. Everyone's <laughs> in the chat. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> Alright, hanging at the back today. Just cruising. Facebook actually uses potatoes to stream. Yeah. Quite possibly. Corey Miller on the ride. Good to see. Uh, my wife's channel? No, my wife's channel is this one right here. <laughs> She'll sometimes dual stream with me if she's writing. Uh, Vaughn did the um, did the same route at the 7 o'clock time slot the other day. What sound does a llama make? Oh, whatever sound I'm making now. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't live stream that though. I didn't join her because I was done after that ride. You saw this. We were sprinting for a hundred and something place anyway. Just having a bit of fun, but I was cooked. I think in the stream I tried to cool down. Even five minutes after, I wasn't feeling the best. Uh, dream drive on Wahoo Kicker. As in, will... If that's a question about will Wahoo implement dream drive gearing on the Kicker bike? I'm guessing no. I'm assuming stages of a patent or something on that. Good evening, Netherlands. Must be evening, must be late night in the Netherlands. This weekend, well, every weekend for the La Tapla Tour is just uh, a single stage run multiple times. So this is me just doing a rerun of stage one. Which takes us up to the mountain route. Uh, Epic KOM, radio tower, oh. and then back down to town. Good evening, Kenneth. I thought I might catch a few people from the States at this time of day. All right, first hill coming up. So a crew ride today, which means I'm just hanging with the crew at the back, just no epic watts required. We'll just get the Ks done. Gives me a reason to get on the bike. Off. Next week we have a course in France map somewhere. I think it's one of the flatter-ish ones. It's not Vontu. Vontu is the last weekend. Trainer difficulty, 
I think it's around 75%. I have a, I think I've got a 25 or 28 on the back. So we should be able to just tick up the climb. Slowly. Uh, in Australia, 7.08 a.m. Kyle, thank you for the super chat donation there. Two US dollars is worth about $10 Australian at the moment. I think <laughs> the conversion rate goes up and down. Depends if you're buying or selling. And we know which way the banks go with their, uh, their exchange rates. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Luigi, I'm riding twice, but I'm not riding very hard today. Just a crew ride, hanging with the crew. The question is, will I do this for Von 2? Will I? I'm not even sure what kind of wattage to hold for Von 2. For this climb the other day, I wanted to peg 300 all the way up. And then we pegged 340 to the climb. That was okay. What do we do for Von 2? Three, four, five times longer? Ugh. Maybe 250? It's gonna be an hour 20, hour 30 for me. I don't know. All right. Warm up hill. <laughs> Back to bed in the UK. What? Now it's early days here. Different time of day for me to stream. All right. Neo 2T, bit of wiggle. Is that nice though? Some kind of vibration coming through the trainer. Possibly the rider. It's too early. <laughs> ah, yes, did the Stelvio. Oh, what gearing for the Stelvio? Look, mate, it, it really depends how heavy you are, how fast you want to go what you're comfortable climbing. For me, if I went to the Stelvio, it depends which side. A semi-compact. Well, let's just go standard chain set to make things easy. 39 at the front. 39.28 will be fine. These days, I think most Shimano's go to 30 by default. That'll also be fine. Uh, riding France maps, yeah. Um, not something I can really cover without getting a letter from a lawyer or something, so I I can't touch that, sorry. I get sued for using the word Peloton. Can you imagine if I showed everyone how to hack the worlds and ride France? ASO would uh, line up a truck and drive it through me backwards. Plus Swift, plus everyone else. So I can't touch that. I've seen it around. It's called self-preservation. I can't break terms of service. I'd be a perfect scapegoat to use. I don't think Zwift or anyone wants to touch the smaller creators, even though we're friendly. There's, there's the responsibility that I have to uh, not get my channel taken down. All right, where are we? 990. There we go. Yeah. It's out there if people want to do it, but I can't. Not publicly. Is there much of a difference between 105 and Altegra? Uh, Altegra DI2, all the way. All the way. Mechanically, no, but weight, there is a difference. So much better quality on Twitch versus YouTube. There we go. And it's coming from the same everything. That's my same encoder. Same, uh, 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 it's the same output stream that I'm sending to one single server. And Twitch looks so much better. 
so it's YouTube's. I spent ages trying to tweak the stream on YouTube, higher bit rate, uh, frame rates, resolutions, you name it, the encoders, could never get it looking good. And then I thought, oh, I'll just check Twitch. Same everything, looks brilliant. But my Twitch monetization doesn't exist. So, doesn't kind of pay the bills, so I'm not really gonna promote that too hard. Why am I at the back of the pack today? Because I can. Because none of us have to race all the time. Sometimes we can just jump on our bike and go for a ride. So that's what I'm up to today. Chilling at the back. Uh, Igor, not quite sure on those two bikes. But if you would give me a choice of Altegra Mechanical versus Altegra Di2, Di2 all day long. Mr. Luigi, the final sprint the other day. Nah, it wasn't. There's people out there doing a lot more than that. Watch any of the, uh, even the community races, people are sprinting a lot heavier than that. Heavier on the pedals, I mean. According to their Zwift rate, they're, they're not really that heavy at all. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, power wise up here, probably 200 ish, I think we'll sit on. That should be a good cruisy pace. Great for the climb on this one. I think this averages out to about five or six. Consistent for the first half. Gets a little jagged at the top. You can see that on the screen there. Uh, just above me. That's a fair warm up though. I'm happy with that. SRAM ETAP or DI2, only minimal experience with ETAP and Axis stuff. I've used it, I, DI2 is what I use it daily though, so DI2 price wise, <laughs> DI2 obviously. The one thing with ETAP, changing from the small ring to the big ring, you've got to do both hands. That's busy. It's like doing this. Every time you want to change big ring to small ring, you've got to think about it and use two hands. I'm a simple person, I need like one button is handy. You get the blips, I guess. Why use Asiomas? Testing Asiomas. More testing. Uh, I still have the two giant Power Pros, the 19 and 20 versions here on the shelf somewhere, waiting for new firmwares or something, but Changing chain rings, I'm not sure. I know you can on stages, power meters. Because I took the chain rings off those to put on the rotor in spider. Is there a bundle for Zwift XTC? Uh, not easily. Uh, see, here's the problem with Zwift. It's, it's like, making your own meal there's no pre-cooked stuff you've got to get a bike a trainer or a smart bike and then machine to run Zwift and then Zwift itself not quite compiling your own kernel to get your sound card driver working on a Linux but it's not too far off in the technicalities uh, best place to start for Zwift to promote my own stuff Jump on YouTube, have a look for simple Zwift setups, GP Llama. And there's one there where I cover uh, these days what it's about to get a simple Zwift setup. Where I cover a bike, trainer, Apple TV, screen, then the additional things like a fan and everything. I do have a Zwift on a budget video, which is still doing really well. It's very outdated though. It talks only about Ant Plus. Kicker Core, absolutely. If I had a Kicker Core or a Kicker 18, um, I have two sitting here in the Llama Lab. The Kicker Core gets more of a use. More so because it's closer <laughs> and lighter. Oh, 
All right, where are we? 9.44. Good stuff. Now, we can't give write-ons with this. You can see the, the phone there hasn't given us the ability to give multiple write-ons. There's no circle around me. Usually, if there's a white circle around me in the companion app, we can tap that and give multiple write-ons. Not that today. Is there any difference between writing it alone or in a group on Zwift? Yeah, they're drafting. Yep. Up a hill, probably not so much, but you do get the drafting effect. Much better going up at this pace than I did the other day. Uh, Tax Neo 2T for this one. Gunnar has an old tax flux smart trainer. Seems like the belt slips. Do I have an idea of what could be wrong? It's the belt and it's the flux. They're still under warranty. Ping them on that. It's not under warranty. Not much can be done. What happened to power tap? A SRAM killing the P2. Struggle to find cleats. Uh, power tap P2 cleats. Just the expedo cleats. Um, if you find uh, the same cleats as the Asiomas. Hang on. Yes. So if you find yourself some uh, expedo Asioma cleats, they call them look Keo compatible. God damn, they're not. They're a type of look Keo compatible. I'll go more into this soon. But you can't interchange cleats from, say, um, vector threes, uh, IQ squared, P1, P2s, and Nasiomas. The cleats for two of those each way are just a little bit different. You can go one way, you can't go the other. But to get cleats for the P1s and P2s, Xpedo Asioma cleats will work perfectly. Proper look here, cleats may be a little loose. Uh, workouts on structured workouts on Zwift good enough uh, or is it better to get trainer or suffer fest yeah. anybody giving you an answer to that is wrong I'm sorry it's down to the individual coaching advice for me you need a coach to look at your training history your goals your response to training everything that current software doesn't really look at If you add structure to an unstructured training cyclist, they'll get better. But there's, there's no, is one software platform better than the other? No, people have bias still tell you that. But it's how you use it. You could look at a brick wall, and if you did no music, nothing else provided, and train correctly, you can still get quick. So coaching advice, I usually steer clear of most of that these days. I can tell you what works for me, but there's what a few billion others that it won't work for. People make, do, do make a lot of money though telling people what to do. So there's that. Oh, right. Where are we? 9.23. Oh, good. Uh, Doretto. Been using the Doretto a bit for power accuracy, the original. Gives me good numbers, or good consistent numbers. Been replaced with the Doretto X recently, or about what, 12 months ago or so. Uh, any negative news to report? No, it's all in the review. Nothing much changes there. If there's any significant updates to a trainer or the experience with, I'll loop back and do another video or an update video. Sixteen percent max gradient on the kicker core limit its usage on Zwift. Has anybody ridden up a sixteen percent gradient in real life? I think 
The, the steep gradients on here are overrated. And I think most people, including myself, and it is documented if you dig far enough down, you fall off your bike at those kind of gradients for any sustained period of time. Short, sharp pinches, fine. So, typically a the maximum percentage gradient simulation of a trainer indicates the brake strength. Usually correlates with the maximum watts it can hold sustained as well. But if anybody wants to climb 16% sustained, good luck. I don't. 12 or 13, that's all I've ever raced up. I mean, maybe there's some short pinches of 16 or 17 for 20 or 30 meters. But if someone wants to do a five minute interval at 16%, all power to them. You're not training for anything, you'll be racing on the road. So I think the, the chase for the most maximum gradient or the most power a train, training could sustain, it's a bit misleading. It's more so about the, the strength of the brake. What's more important is how a trainer feels, how the ride feel ticks over. If anybody wants the perfect example of what that should feel like, find a Le Mans Revolution. Beautiful feel. Tire width preference, 28 or 30. You're talking to a roadie. That's in the stratosphere. 25s for me at the moment. Raced on 23s and 22s for years. A good Zwift training plan to start or improve on? I'm sorry, I can't give any decent advice there. I look like an idiot, looking like an idiot later on. You need a coach. Coaches do cost a lot of money, more than Zwift. There's a reason for that. Good coaches will analyze more than just, here's what you should do. If you want true in-depth analysis about where you're going, where you're heading, where you've been, how you respond, a coach needs to comb over a year or so of data and see what you're into. You want to get better? Go ride your bike. That's do it consistently. If you want advice, good advice is uh, it costs money. A lot of money. Uh, gravel bikes, yeah, but prices keep going up. Prices keep going up. Uh, gravel bike. What is the the Canyon's about five and a half thousand dollars here? Probably the best value. I don't think I'd get that use out of it at the moment. So I can't justify the price. So grab a bike, ideas are on hold. I'm looking at a, maybe a cheap Chinese frame and wheel set. I'm not going full send, so going cheap that way. But even then, I then look at the group sets that I want to put on it. That blows the budget out. So like I did with the road bike, I'll, I'll whinge for a few years and not upgrade, and then finally upgrade and love it. <laughs> Train on difficulty, probably 75%. I need to put that on screen somewhere. But my train, it doesn't matter what training difficulty I have it on, or anyone else for that matter. I could put a 50 tooth cassette on the back and spin at 100% doesn't really matter. Not today. This is a chill ride. Swift so up for winter power meter pedals, kick a sample, kick a core alone. Look, a direct drive train is always going to be a little better, sometimes a lot better. But the kicker snap is one of the best wheel on trainers. Rocket plates covered in three videos already. And the more I say about rocket plates, the more in trouble that I get.
with the rocket plate crew. So everything's over on video. I'll, I'll let you go check those out. Not for me. They have their place, I respect that. My issue mainly was around what they were sold as, and that wasn't my experience. Same with someone saying a power meter is accurate, and it's not. I have problems with that. What's a kilo on the screen? Not many today. Not many at all. Just cruising today. 1200, some, must be some light joints. That went up. Whew. This road keeps going up too. The downhill should be fun. It's a good run back into town from the top. Dennis, power dropouts. Uh, Bluetooth or Ant Plus? I have no idea what my FTP is. I'm sorry. And it doesn't really matter. I haven't tested it for years. Um, yeah, drop out. See, your Wi Fi is solid. That could be the problem, Dennis. If your Wi Fi is solid and using channels 10, it'll blat everything else. Um, Dropouts could be caused by a number of things. Microwave ovens cause dropouts. Busy Wi-Fi on 2.4 gig. Uh, long extension cables. Anything put right close to a HDMI cable, an unshielded HDMI cable. HDMI can be very noisy and you get interference. Try a different USB port. The USB port could be next to your screen output or something. There's so many variables, and that's why so many people have a lot of trouble with that. Because there's no real answer. That's like coaching. There's no real answers for coaching. Everyone tries and spends a lot of money on it. And you'll get there, but... Yeah, dropouts. Wired isn't the solution, unfortunately. People are calling for wired. But that's going to only serve a very small subset of, uh, of people. You'll never get a wire into an Apple TV. You'll never get a wire into a heart rate strap. People don't usually have heart rate dropouts, do they? It's always trainers. So I think they just need to build better trainers. Now a Ven Top Descent Party, there's one. Yeah, we can do those, for sure. These are a way to calibrate the stages power meter. I don't think there's any offsets you can do for stages. Is it a dual sided or single sided? Disadvantages are an eight speed cassette on an eight speed bike. Nope. Well, I do the Italian lap. I don't know what the Italian lap is. I'm sorry. Whew. All right, what are we? Just over halfway up. Awesome. Radio tower is going to be a slog today. I'm trying to keep a lid on it. Mm -hmm. Saved a few bucks when buying the SB20. I won't need another power source to provide two sources into it for racing. Why not? The Sage's bike takes power from the crank arms, which are Sage's power meters. If you think you, you can record both the bike and the cranks, it's the same source. So you're gonna have two different sources of recording, but the same thing. That really won't help out for any Zwift validation racing. Uh, comparing a single sided power meter to uh, trainers, you're measuring two different things. 
single side will take one side and double it. The trainer gives you total power. Oh, right on from Eric Min. Good stuff. <clears throat> Five million drops ready? Get down. It will be. Any updates on IQ squared? Well, in true consistency with IQ squared, no. There's been no updates. <clears throat> if you're a member of the channel, rather than either a subscriber or a viewer, if you're a a member and you've hit that join button. I give updates every few weeks on a lot of stuff behind the scenes. IQ squared's on the list every couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, yesterday's update for everyone. No word. Ready? Five million drops. Let's go. Nothing happens at five million. It just ticks over like that. Woot. Uh, CAD 10, no. Haven't ridden one. Well, I don't think so. When's the last Cannondale I rode? Might have been a higher bike somewhere. How come my avatar has a headlight? He's conscious of being seen by other drivers. Using ultra mode. Oh, 4K mode on Zwift on a PC. You'll um, you get a headlight turned on when it's dark. I'm not sure if it's there on um, Apple TV or iOS or anything. Road feel. I haven't got road feel on the bridge. Is road feel on? Let's have a look. Ah. It wasn't. Yeah, training difficulty around 75 today. Oh, what else? I've got power three. I didn't have road feel on. Now we do. Uh, what bike, Adam? Yeah, I had a, a conference call with What Bike a couple of weeks ago, so I'm across all the details with the new What Bike, Adam. Uh, that's all I have for now. Same physical unit as the original Watt Bike Adam, so you'll get uh, the same physical package. I think the same handlebars, effectively the same handlebars, same button control, same Q factor, 170 mil cranks, same, same all round except the resistance unit, which is what I had major issues with. We saw my testing of that. They weren't too happy with that review, but I'm not here to please companies. <laughs> I just want to ride my bike and have a good experience, so we gave that both barrels. I've since retested with the new firmware because everyone claims it fixed the gear changing, but it didn't. So I didn't worry about reporting that. It was the same, same. Uh, they claim it's a good unit, so we'll see. We'll see. Availability is the biggest problem with any smart bike. They can make them, or they can make test units and they can talk about them. <laughs> I think every company with a smart bike has struggled to sell them and produce them en masse. All right. Thirty six on Twitch. Look out. Good to see everybody on from Twitch joining in the fun. All right, not speaking of fun, the radio tower is coming up in a few minutes. I'm not looking forward to that. So today, just a cruise ride, not too much into the red. 7.37 a.m. Coffee number two coming up after this one. Always someone to ride with with these massive events. Here we go. Let's 
if you're having a good day or a bad day. There's likely someone always ahead of you and someone always behind you and someone nearby. Double draft for these events. So it should be a little bit quicker than just riding by yourself or with a Santa Bunch. The ultimate warm up. That's a handy one, isn't it? I think one of the, the best tips there in the ultimate warm up is to at least hit the heart rate you want to hit before you go out and race. Another analogy would be like a cold shower. If you were to stand there, turn the shower on cold, step in for five seconds and step out. It's the first time you've stepped into the cold shower. Oh, that, that change and the tolerance for that's very low. But if you were to step into a, a cold shower for five seconds, step out, step in, and then stay in there for 20 seconds and then step out and wait for it. And then you do the same test again. Step in for five, step out. Once you're already cold, it's like, oh, okay, I know it's coming. You don't have that shock to the system. It's exactly what a good warm up will do. If you think you can hit max heart rate for the first time, or straight out of the blocks from in a Zwift race, your body will be like, holy, what the hell was that? And you'll feel uncomfortable. But if you've been there, you know what's coming. It's exactly what a good warm up does. So think of the cold shower. It's always unpleasant at the start, but you'll get used to it. If you're lucky and you haven't warmed up and the race eases into the effort, sure. But you're taking a gamble. If you're talking about time trials, <laughs> there's never an easy time trial. So Ventop has no warm-up lead-in. Interesting. Only 1,200 in the event today. Yeah, it's the end of the weekend. Well, it's Monday here. <clears throat> We're ahead of time. I think the biggest attended one was the second or third event. I did the first one, which was 3 p.m. Saturday. And that was three and a half, 4,000, I think. How can you tell if someone is using multiple people? Adam DT 133 Everyone you're seeing on screen now is a real human. There's no computer generated bots in here. They're all 1,234. Let's be real, 1,230 is probably four bots. The people <laughs> could be doing something with. But no, there's no computer controlled units in here. Go top. New road markings for this uh, this event, and the yellow right on thumbs. That's cool. Earn that downhill. Okay, we're trying. Uh, what about Cam Jeffers? That's a question. Twitch is better quality. I keep saying it. People on Twitch know what's up. I just wish YouTube would uh, be just as good as Twitch. Uh, any new trainers in Q4? Who knows? The world's turned upside down this year for trainers. I think most trainer manufacturers are like, yes! We didn't have anything anyway, just like last year and the year before and the year before and the year before. <laughs> Nothing much has changed. Uh, Maybe, maybe we'll see some new trainers. 
But what we're seeing now is these smart bikes coming out that are the next big thing. They're just not integrated though. So I don't know what we're gonna get from new trainers. No one's gonna, if it's the same experience on the pedals, no change to ride feel. If they don't come out with a two times ant strength or something different, then all they'll be doing is just repackaging current tech, dressing it up and selling it again. It's pretty stagnant. Not to be on a downer, but nothing much has changed in a few years. Case in point, going back to the, uh, the Le Mans Revolution for my training recently. That's a perfect trainer. More than capable of the training sessions that I needed. Somebody asked me the other day whether the Neo had snow feel or road feel for snow. Yeah, it does. It's just a little bit grindier on this section here. It says me, running out of gears. Oh, here we go. The long march. This will take a while. Everyone flying down already. Top riders probably finish about now. We saw Ed Laverick the other day come to the line with the front bunch in one of these rides. I think his time was about 41 minutes, 42 minutes all up. Absolutely flying. Uh, gears, 39, whatever I have at the back. Maybe a 28. Lionel did 35 on this course. What did the pros do last night? I haven't seen the, the replay. What was the winning time for the men and the women? <laughs> There's a good point, the elevation profile. On the 13% there at the top, it says how steep it is, but the overall uh, elevation profile is stretched out, it looks flat on the bottom of the mini map. Forty-one for the winner. There you go. So your top uh, amateur races or non-pro peloton races are doing the same times. Doesn't surprise me. Oh, Lionel did the Alpin 35, okay. I think what Zwift allows people to do is people, it'll find people that have world tour uh, physiology and world tour raw numbers. So I can guarantee you there's people who don't ride the world tour who have those kind of numbers out there, of course. without Zwift or without the online racing side of things, they'd be riding in bunches or limited bunches at the moment, no racing. I think we'll see it more and more. It doesn't diminish what the pros can do, but it just goes to show that they're not, they're not all that unique. To be in the pro peloton, first of all, you've got to want to be there and the sacrifice that that includes, there's gonna be Random people out there in society who have superior VO2 maxes and they'll just stumble around and be good at sport. Maybe they'll find cycling. And Zwift is where they'll they'll appear. Women's was 45, that's flying. Oh, speaking of not flying. Morning, Sean, how are we? Has anybody won the postcode bingo that the uh, state of Victoria is now playing with lockdown? <laughs> there are a number of suburbs that are lock locked down again. 
stage two for the tap the tour. I assume it's the same time. We'll sign up for that one. Oh, 56 RPM, really? Could someone develop a rear wheel hub that is motorized allows for outdoor erg walk workouts controlled by a head unit? Jeff, look up um, Michael Freeberg and the Air Hub. A I R H U B. It's very close to what you're after. So it's a front wheel unit that adds resistance in the front hub up to 100 watts. Controlled via an app. I'd love to see it controlled by Bluetooth or a Connect IQ app. But it's hard work. All right, nearly there. If anybody wants some, I won't say they're easy Ks. But if you hit join, but you can't ride with me, can you, if I'm in an event? That doesn't work. We'll do a free ride one day. I was gonna say you could join along and get the descent. You still have to pedal this descent though. It's too early for this. Yeah, you're telling me. Let's see if little Maxie's out of bed yet. We had the Nest doorbell installed the other day. And they don't sell them in Australia, not the doorbell anyway, the other nest stuff they do. So we found one and got the right power supply. Absolutely brilliant. Facial recognition at the front door. Should have installed one a long time ago. I can confirm. No one's at the front door. And baby Max is out of bed. Good stuff. Will we see Vaughn at the top of Vaughn Top next week? <laughs> Maybe. Who is this guy? Peter, when we find the answer, we'll let you know. We're still trying to work it out. Off. Oh, it's not pleasant, but I'm consistent. The green line there is. That's what we're after. Vanderpoel getting dropped before the radio now. <laughs> Look, the game physics aren't real life physics. We saw Viviani get dropped the other week through the uh, Titans Grove. I had my money on Viviani for the win. There's no way someone like Viviani would get dropped in real life. But it's about playing the game. The police can access my nest. Sure. If the police want to spend their time looking at my nest, that's okay. It's the aliens from outer space that are spying on us. That's the problem. All right, nearly there. Good crew. Where are we? Yep, always someone to ride with. I think the, the profile elevation on screen is correct. It's just scaled wrongly. You can see I've gone from left to right. Up the entire climb. But it just has the incorrect scale on there. Here's all the Tour de France stuff. So they've put fans. Be good if the fans were all the way up the climb. <laughs> there we go. 50 miles. We were finished by this time on Saturday, weren't we? We did a 50. Was it a 50 minute and 16 seconds or something for the course?
What ventilation do I use? Uh, I have one Sun Air fan at the moment. I don't even have, don't have the kicker fan on at the moment in front of me. This is just an easier ride for me. So, haven't got too much air going on. Fuck. I have to grind through the road field of the Neo on here. Easy ride today. Easy ride. Okay, elevation profile showing. Oh, super tuck. What are we? Oh, we're kind of mid pack, aren't we? Just a little bit down on mid pack. That's all good. It technically does what it should, but it's just not right. <laughs> I think that's the same with everything with computers, isn't it? Everything in IT. It's exactly how it's designed. It's just designed badly. <laughs> Why who tick is taking a while to connect to Zwift? Zwift is a weird one for some senses. I even find with the polar heart rate strap that I have on at the moment, it takes, it doesn't show for the first minute and then it shows up or I go back in and go back out. Um, sensor pairing, I think it does a sweep of uh, certain keys. If it's not FEC or if it's not an open standard, you have to have the key for that. It's just. Just takes a while. Sometimes you'll see a, a trainer show up as just FEC or not the FEC. It takes a while for the FEC to show up. Uh, the name GP Llama because no one else has it. It's a misheard song lyric from years ago. And GP Sheepy wouldn't let me have his name either. All right. Will we punch the climb? No, we'll just chill these little climb bits. So if you want to fly down the Alp, you need to punch the flat sections and the slight uphills. Poop Scoop. Good to see that I got you onto Zwift there, Poop Scoop. Love the username. <laughs> Hicken, which power meter did you go with? And the Isle of Man. I'm guessing it had to have a, a decent IPX rating. Not just splash proof. Oh, super tuck. Let's go. Alright, should be a pretty cruisy ride back into town. This just takes us back off the hill and then uh, finishes off. Oh, Maddie Kinney's is right on. Good stuff. There we go. El Dilemo. Knowing what's up, 15 watts a kilo, punch. So if you wanted to make up a lot of time here, you punch the pedals right here really, really hard. You can see a lot of people there sprinting up this little climb. If I don't sprint, I'll show you what happens and how far off. So, okay, that little through there is at one second ahead, two seconds. If I just ride up here easy, I'm gonna be off the back of this group. No, they didn't punch too hard. But speed-wise, I'm doing, what am I doing, 14 k's an hour. But if I was to punch that, you fly over there at 30 k's an hour, get the slingshot, and you're well up the road. See, yeah, look at the, the distance they've got on me now. They're gone. 12, 15, 16. Why am I doing this event? <sighs> well, I've already done the event. I've done the, the first one and went pretty hard with all I had on that. Today I thought I'd just do another one, a crew ride, just chill. Nothing too hard, there's no red efforts on the screen. Just to uh, get my riding for the day. Rather than ride by myself, I thought I'd join 1,234 others who are now well up the road. See that, caught napping. Delmo, 30 seconds up the road already within, what, a minute or so. That's just phenomenal. So if you get caught napping on the downhills, you will lose a lot of time. Even for this. And they're out of sight. You can see on the mini map at the top, they are well ahead. Oh yeah, drops without pedaling. Let's have a look. So if I'm not, have zero power, Theory is, you're right. 
previously, drops would only accumulate if you were pedaling the bike and they wouldn't start ticking up. Unless you were... Uh, serious effort. Well, I did the serious effort up the climb and we had a bit of fun racing back. That was 50 minutes. Bang! So I got totally wiped out by that group there. They carried all the speed through and they're five seconds ahead. Go on, Zwift puts the brakes on if you don't pedal down the hill. Uh, Ovette was uh, Aussie, I think. I think Zwift are claiming him as a Brit. Ah, uh, yeah, Air Hub allows you to train while in group rides in a draft. Sure, but if you, you shouldn't be doing training in a group ride anyway. If you're doing any individual training, you've got to go out by yourself. Or you're just being irresponsible. It allows you to ride harder in a group if you need to. But you're not going to be doing 5 by 5s in a bunch, telling everyone to slow down or speed up. British-born Australian cyclist, there we go. And, uh, yeah, the Air Hub just puts a, a certain wattage of brake on the front, that's it. I thought, if 100, 100 watts especially applying 100 watts to the front end, would that make it unstable or flip you over the handlebars? It doesn't, it, it's fine. But you add 100 watts to your FTP efforts? Oi, <laughs> that's a lot of work. I haven't watched today's race, so don't know, that's why I was asking about it before. Um, was there some controversy about the finish line? I saw some people complaining, or oh, discussing. Is there a discussion online or is it just complaints these days? I think it's just complaints on the internet, isn't it? That uh, I think Israel's startup nation was claiming a win or someone was claiming they took the win. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think any of us know how it really works. Super Tuck works. Woohoo! Favorite route on Zwift? Titans Grove's pretty cool. Well, it's good for what I do for warming trainers up, so I like Titans Grove. Uh, Watopia Hilly, Jarvis Island, the original was cool. That's where it all started. Uh, Watopia Hilly, the original map, we did so many laps of that. Andy R from Denver, good afternoon. I think I don't have my world map up for the time. All right, what do we got? Six Ks home. Easy done. Road feel on. There's some wooden slats. It says like I'm not very interested in the pro racing. I, eh, is what it is. I haven't. I didn't follow last night's race. It's the middle of the night here. It's only 8 a.m. I'm not excited about much. If you want to talk about coffee, I'll get excited. <laughs> um, my thoughts on IQ Square? Well, they have been able to deliver a, a, a power meter to myself, a power meter to Ray. Numbers look pretty good. That's all I know. I, would I invest in them? No, absolutely not. Would I buy it? No. Would I pre-order? Nope. Would I sit back and wait to see if they can deliver what they claim? Yeah. It's an interesting story, and I think I said in my review on my take on things that uh, it's become more about the story than the power meter. If you want a power meter, go and buy one. If you want a better power meter than that one, go buy one. They're on the market. What people want is a cheap power meter. And they, have, they haven't delivered that yet. They've delivered three of them. So that's up to them. I'm not being an asshole for no reason. It's up to them to to communicate where they're at, to deliver. Best copy roaster near you. Uh, star, is it Fika? Fika or Johnny Alou here in Ballarat? I got booted from the tour team with Lance. No, don't get that one.
Bevan. Oh, I think a French writer. Okay. Yeah, I'll go back and have a look at the replay. I'm all alone after not uh, holding onto those groups flying off the mountain. Here we go. Here's a bunch I can join in with. We'll back it off. Industry means, all right. What's the postcode there, Sean? We have to check postcodes now before we go to Melbourne. <laughs> hey, crew. Let's sit in here. At what point do you need a power meter on an outdoor bike? When you want to just record your numbers, run and measure your efforts. A power meter outside allows you to review your effort without all the external details. So, for example, when my wife first got a power meter, she came for a ride with us guys, had a horrible time. She was off the back and fighting away and holding wheels and dropping back and got home, really unimpressed with the ride. She loads up her numbers. She hit a number of power PBs, which changed her outlook on exactly what kind of ride it was. So it allows you to click more data. Do you need a power meter? No, you don't need a power meter. But if you've got one, should it be accurate? It should be. I uh, never tested a powder max, sorry, no. They're quite rare to get a hold of here in Australia. And expensive. Myrtleford coffee? But I think we always used to stop in Myrtleford for coffee. Oh, I can't wait to get back up to Bright. Many, many years up there. G'day crew, here we go. Here's a nice little group I can stay with. Disc wheels are, all, are not legal in a road race. <laughs> I think we have to have helmets on too, don't we? One side versus two side pedal power meters. Uh, they are what they are. The same with the one-sided crank-based power meters. A lot of people say they're inaccurate, but most of them are very accurate at exactly what they measure. And that's one side. Is it an accurate representation of your effort? It's, you, you don't know unless you've got the other power meter on the other side to, to see what's balanced. So they're fine. For 90% of what you need, they're fine. You won't win or lose a Tour de France by having a a single side or a double sided power meter. You won't even win a local club race either. Depends how you use the tools. Lots of wheel chopping. Yeah, look, that's what's hard to watch about the big bunch rides is the position just changes so much. It's really hectic at the front. This is quite smooth. But if you're watching the official stream, Normally in a bike race, you can have it on in the background. You see who's working on the front. They'll do a turn, or cobbles. It's easier to watch. These short, sharp, swift races are very hectic to watch, trying to keep track of who's where. Enjoy your coffee, Sean. Thanks for dropping by. Sprint best is only 23, so no one's going for the sprint on this. In a thousand riders, if anyone was going for the sprint, that'd be below 20, especially with double draft and a lead out. It's like everyone's thinking about finish line positions. Double sided gives twice as many numbers to look at. <laughs> Should you buy another bike to go on your turbo trainer? If you want to waste a lot of money, sure, but there's nothing wrong with putting any bike on an indoor trainer. 
If your bike breaks on an indoor trainer, like hell you want to be riding it outdoors in traffic. Companies have finally come around to it. I think Specialize now back their bikes on trainers. Canyon are now marketing the fact that their bikes can be used on trainers. We've said it for years. There's nothing wrong. Now the industry's like, oh yeah, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It just took them a while. Drops the feather. Uh, no comment on the France routes. As soon as I comment, I'll be riding them online when they're open for everyone to ride. Come on, Gru. Almost home. Two K to go. Time for a coffee. I'll see if I can do this for the others. I'll do a a first ride of these efforts, efforts, these the tap efforts that I do when the course first opens, opens and then we'll do a true ride later on, which takes in more of the sights and sounds. I've seen a lot more roadside uh, updates on this than I did the first one where I was looking just up the road and going a little harder. Yeah, it's always a group grouped ride. Right, look at that. This has a quick run back into town too. Um, when using my Garmin for power, do I use three seconds or ten seconds? Three seconds. One second power display is just too quick; it can jump around too much. Ten seconds is too slow, so three seconds is spot on. smoothness and such is it really that helpful no one knows let's go with a no for now because there's no depends how you use it there's pedal smoothness and torque effectiveness I think if you had an imbalance or you're coming back from an injury or you had a really weird issue happening on a bike let's just say after a long Ironman effort two or three hours your power was dropping you didn't know what was going on Those metrics might be able to give you some insight. I do like the fact that power meters have other features like that. Because power has given us a number for years and years. We need more than just a number. High speed analytics would be handy. No sprints today, we're just rolling in. Alrighty. That's 20 minutes just cruising versus oh, 20 minutes slower. That's still a fair ride. Accurate power numbers first, yeah. Uh, no slippy with a 2T, no. And I went pretty hard on the 2T the other night. That wasn't slipping out of me, so that's, that's where it comes into its own above the Neo 1 and Neo 2. There we go. I'm not going to sprint for the line. Come on, dinger. Come on, dinger dirt. Roll me. Got me. Bang, on the line. <laughs> Good stuff. There we go. Hour 10 for 164. I think it was 50 minutes for 280 average last time. Here we go. Now we can start giving some ride on. So we go. Now we're staying here, please. Don't get back to Innsbruck. But now we can start giving some ride on to everyone who's finished. That's the duos, there, there we are. It was doable. I think the next one might be a little bit friendlier for an easy crew ride. I think the next one is stage stage four for the LaTap. Stage four of the virtual tour, but LaTap stage two. It's a little confusing, but That'll be next Saturday, my time. It's now Monday. Give it a few days. I think they're doing a lot of discovery rides this week. I saw on the calendar. Let's have a quick look at that. More events. Oh, I need to stand up more. 
So what's on for today? We have, oh, there's another little tap. So if you want to do what I've just done then, there's one starting off in 38 minutes, is it? 48 minutes. And then the Discovery Rides. There we go, I think that's one of the first Discovery Rides. So that's just the hilly route reverse. Nothing at all different about those other than the, it's just a standard reverse hilly. Well, it's hoping it's always on, but it'll be dressed up as the Tour de France. Still well attended, look at that, 467 in the open, 62 in the women's ride. And every, Is there a one lapper of that? Stage two discovery ride. Okay, so they're running stage one and stage two discovery rides of the actual virtual. There we go. And I'm guessing all through July that'll be away. So there we go, two hours later, the same. One, it's a really well attended. When there's something like this on Zwift, they really do well with the numbers. I think the La Ut Root was the same, wasn't it? Very well attended. 6.45, so 7 o'clock tonight. Good stuff. Alrighty. There's today's crew ride. My ride's done for the day. Give some more ride-ons. Uh, if anybody else is uh, looking at joining us, I think it's the last of the stage ones. But I, I believe you unlock the kit if you do any of the stages. So if you missed it on that one, you can still unlock the kit by doing... Um, Stage two or stage three, full of tap. We should start this um, this weekend. In the meantime, have a great day. Uh, Veronica Mitchich, good ride. <laughs> okay, it's time to go see the little Maxi. I'm gonna grab another coffee. Thanks for joining in this one. It was a different time of day. Starting off at 7 a.m. my time, so hopefully we've got a few people out of the US who usually don't catch the live streams. But always a bit of fun. Love the chats, love the company and the banter. I've got to go and catch up on last night's tour action. Hopefully the uh, the replays are up already and we'll go from there and we'll be back, I don't know, soon. I've got a pile of stuff to get through, so all right, giddy up. Okay, have a good day everyone or a good night. We'll see you soon.